What's going on YouTube? This is a tutorial for the t-shirts mock-ups V1. For those of you who are a bit confused, just check the description down below. We recently added some digital products that you guys can check out on the Satan's Media website. So this is just a tutorial and kind of a breakdown of that mock-up if you guys need any extra help or to kind of understand the organizational side of it and how you can actually utilize it to the best of your ability. Make sure to check the description and check out the products and let me know what you think. Moving on though, let's talk about the mock-up itself. So when you first open it up, right away you'll notice that we have it broken down into three different panels. Uh, the top one, of course, is just me reiterating my thanks for actually picking up the product. Shout out to you. I appreciate Appreciate you if you are currently watching along after purchasing it. Appreciate you once again. Now, aside from that, you'll notice that on the side here, we have a color code index essentially. And this is just my way of breaking down the project, trying to organize it the best that I can. So obviously we have green, which is edit directly. We have blue, which is click into smart object, orange, which is delete slash replace, and then red, which is don't delete. So to make a bit more sense of this, let's click in to the front shirt section. And we're gonna zoom in here to kind of focus in on that. Now, as you can see, those color codes you'll notice are within the actual layers. So once again, red meaning to pretty much not mess with it. If you're a bit more experienced, of course, you can always tweak it. I mean, at the end of the day, this is your own file, so you could do whatever you want with it. But if you're trying to get pretty much the same look that we currently have, the way it comes out straight once you open the file, I recommend not really changing anything Thing that's highlighted red so to kind of just run through everything of course we have labels at the top and that's within this folder you're able to edit the seam label once again you'll notice that it is marked as blue which means it is a smart object so for those of you who don't really know what smart objects are you can always google search it or check on youtube but it's essentially just a file that's embedded within the photoshop file so you're able to actually click on that window and it'll open up a new photoshop file in terms of the tabs, you'll notice it at the top here. Now, whatever you do within that file, after you're done making all of your changes, you, all you have to do is just save it. Don't save as, just save it normally, which is just Command S on your keyboard. And once it's done saving, you'll notice that those changes will actually update on the main Photoshop file. So if I wanted to make this lower seam label green, for example, notice here once again, Anything that is marked green is directly editable. So we can click on here and we can change the color of the actual fabric. Say I want it to be bright green like this, hit okay. And once we save it and check back over, you'll notice at the bottom left-hand corner, the label has now been updated. So you can always just play around with it, save it, check back in, see if you like it. It, it takes a few different tries sometimes to kind of get what you want, but that's the great thing about smart objects. It's a great way to kind of hone in on a certain thing and it just organizes everything essentially. So once again, within Photoshop files, you'll also see those color codes. So we talked about the green now, obviously with orange, that is to replace or to delete. So if you have your own design, of course, you can always hide it or completely get rid of it. Either one works, obviously. The orange labeled layers are just essentially placeholders at the end of the day. So moving out of there, next we have the neck tag. So if you have your own brand that you're working with, maybe you're working for a client, they wanna have custom neck labels, you can always uh, go in and add their logo on there. Again, a lot of the same rules apply. Green is directly editable. Red means to kind of leave it alone. Orange means to get rid of it. And if it's blue, it is a smart object. Next up, we have hang tags and that's under the hang tag folder. And once again, a lot of the same rules, you're able to edit the hang tag front design and also the back, and they will correspond to here, the front one being the one on the left and the back design being the one on the right. The cool thing about the left sleeve design, the right sleeve and the full pattern is that whatever edit that you make within those three smart objects, it will actually do the opposite on the back of the shirt. So let me explain. If I want to add a design to the left part of the sleeve, right? We click into it and you'll notice that there's a few guides here. Now the middle guide is supposed to represent the seam line that your shirt has right in the middle. So if I were to, for example, let's just put a random square, right? And we're just gonna put that right in the middle, just like so. We're gonna fill it in with maybe the color green, just so it's easy to see. If I were to save this and go back over, you'll notice that part of the square actually shows up, but then it gets cut off. 
Now, if we were to look at the other side of the shirt being the back, you'll notice it actually updates over here. And that makes sense, right? If you have a design that starts on this side on the front side of the shirt and it crosses over that middle seam and goes to the back of the shirt, then technically you should be able to see it on both sides, right? So that kind of eliminates a little extra work that you have to do when it comes to adding designs on the sleeves. The same thing applies with the pattern. So we actually have a full pattern smart object here where you can go in and add your own pattern. Maybe some people want kind of paint splatter all over their shirt or something like that. They can go in, add that pattern within this layer. And whenever they save that smart object and come back, it will of course do the opposite for the back. With the full pattern smart object, you're also able to either disable or enable the mask that is associated with it. So you'll notice here at the bottom within your layers that there is an X over that mask. Now the reason why it's X'd out is because the pattern that I wanted is this white, black, and red pattern. And I actually wanted the inside of the shirt to also be white. But let's say you don't want the pattern to go on the inside part of the, of the shirt next to the, the custom label. Well, all you have to do is click the layer and it will automatically enable the mask. That mask is essentially just erasing that pattern within that area. But if you do want it to be there, then all you have to do is right click and just hit disable layer mask and it's going to put a big red X over it and the mask will be disabled. I recommend disabling it or enabling it and not deleting it because if you were to delete it, then you'll have to go in yourself again and create that mask if you choose to change your mind. So I recommend just enabling it or disabling it depending on your preference, but the option is there if you need it. Finally, of course, we have the front designs. So if we click into there, you'll notice some more guides. These guides are really just to represent mainly where the top of the neck seam line is. And then roughly where I personally felt like made the most sense for adding designs within the upper chest area. So for me, for example, this shirt that I'm currently wearing, we added this logo and we have it on the upper chest area. I felt like this made the most sense. And this is essentially a guide for you to hopefully not have to go back and forth too many times and to roughly know where to put your design. That way afterwards, you can always just quickly kind of tweak it just a little bit to get it in the right spot that you want it. So that was the idea there. Finally, of course, you're able to edit the color of the shirt completely. And that again is labeled in green, so you can edit it directly. Just click on the symbol there and you'll have the hue slash saturation properties window pop up. And here, all you have to really do is just mess with the hue, the saturation and the lightness to kind of get the color that you roughly want. So for example, if I want kind of a very dark, like navy blue color for my shirt, well, well, I'll just go over to the blue section of the hue, up the saturation just a little bit, and we'll kind of play around with it. We'll up the lightness as well. And then as you can see, we're start, starting to kind of get in that area. Maybe I want it to be a lot more punchy and you can really see the blue. So we'll up the saturation some more, maybe darken it a little bit to kind of get that dark navy blue. And there you go. Essentially, you have a navy blue shirt. You're not able to see all of the colors of course, because we do have a pattern that's actually covering the other layers. But if we were to hide that, you'll notice that it is indeed a navy blue shirt. So, so yeah, that's pretty much it on that. The A lot of the same things apply to the other side as well. If we were to open the back shirt tab, you'll notice a lot of the same things. What you won't notice though is a lot of labels. Um, the neck label isn't there. The hang tag label isn't there. And also the seam label also isn't there, but everything else Else is pretty much the same. Um, you can come in here again. I kind of labeled here that they are copies, so you can always go into these layers as well and make the adjustments that you want to, to make. And they'll also update on the opposite being the front shirt. And essentially that's pretty much it. A lot of it is just plug and play smart objects, editing it directly, which are labeled green and pretty much just importing your own designs in there and just getting rid of the placeholders that we have. And it's pretty much a one-stop shop for all of your mockups when it comes to t-shirts. So I hope this video helped at all. If it did, make sure to leave a like and comment and maybe recommend this mockup to maybe a friend who's trying to get into some type of apparel design or may need something 
something to kind of help them out in future projects or something that they're working on right now, make sure to let them know. So I appreciate you guys watching. I hope this helped and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.